Hey everyone, it's Alex. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my studio. And we are back with another episode of Alex Likes to Knit. This is a video podcast style series where I just talk about everything I'm knitting, things I've finished recently, everything I'm working on, and then some plans and goals related to my knitting. So if you like to knit or you're interested, I'm really happy you're here. Let's get started. <laughs> I really only have one finished object to share, um, and that is these scrappy socks that I was working on last episode. Um, I finished them, I've been wearing them, and um, I'll show you guys a picture of them. I've literally like ha have been wearing them today, so I'm not going to show them to you right now, but you'll see a picture or a little footage of some or something of them. But I wanted to report they fit great. They fit great. I'm so happy with them. I'm definitely gonna use the same like formula and technique to do more shorty socks. So if you weren't here, what I did was I made um, like a stockinette. I started I started in stockinette with the cuff. So I usually do 56 stitches for the leg and the foot of my sock. Really, that's because my gauge is loose. It's not because I have a super small foot. Um, so I did my I do my normal amount of stitches, um, and I just cast on and start doing stockinette. Do about ten rows of stockinette, and then I folded in a piece of fold over elastic. So it has an elasticated um, like cuff just above the heel. I did that, and then I did about four more rounds before going into my heel flap and gusset. Um, I do like an extra deep heel flap and gusset. I do 18 repeats for the heel flap. And I think usually for a 56, what I've usually seen is for a 56 round um, sock, doing more like 14. And I do 18, um, which just helps me with, I have a pretty high like arch and instep and it gives me that extra room um, around the heel and the instep. So that's what I did for that sock and it fits so great. So I'm definitely going to keep making those. I don't have any in progress right now, um, but I have a lot of plans, especially for more scrappy ones. This was a scrappy pair that I used some leftovers and split them into like two even sections for each small leftover that I had so I could make matching socks, but use every last bit of these yarns that I had because I thought they looked so nice together. So, I mean, the color, the stripes, the fit, the elastic, Everything about these came out so good. So I just had to talk about it. So now we're getting into really the thick of it because I have so many works in progress. I think this is probably more works in progress than I've ever had, <laughs> but I'm gonna go through them all and show y'all kind of what and why I have all these things. Um, so I have one large project. Oh, really, I have two large projects. And then I have three pairs of socks, a hat, and a bonus project that is not knitting. So I have two larger projects that are gifts. So I'm gonna save those for the very end in case one of those gifts is for you, you can get out of here. But let's talk about all the socks that I have first. So let me, let me grab them. Okay, I'm gonna go in the order in which I casted these on because I did not have any of these casted on last episode. I don't know why I decided to cast on three socks. Well, I kind of do, but I justified them individually. Um, but the first one is this. <laughs> I have a little spooky, stripey sock going on. That's the like jog side. I'm gonna try to do the stripe jogs on opposite sides so that they're on the inside. And when I wear them, I'll need to remember like to put the heel on the other side whenever I do the second sock. But this is um, just a vanilla sock. Um, what I said about doing the 18 repeats on the heel, 56 stitches around, that's what I have here. Um, this yarn that I'm using, I have a orange and a black. It's um, Knit Picks Stroll. The colors are pumpkin and black. Um, in case you're wondering. This orange is kind of a neutral, dark, um, 
like brownish orange it's not like a really bright halloween orange but i do i do really like it and i, I think it looks really nice with the black and like just screams halloween which is fun i wanted to i got these yarns really to make um these socks called like batty for halloween is the uh name of the sock pattern i'll put a picture of um the sample of that pattern it's by uh, charlotte stone of stone knits and i have her book and that pattern is in the book so i wanted to make those for halloween and i ordered this yarn but then um i was just so excited to cast it on and i know i'm gonna have enough for two pairs of socks because i got two 50 gram balls of orange and one of black so i know i'll have enough to do two pairs so i'm gonna do one that is striped and then I'm going to do a shorty pair with my new shorty technique with the elastic and then do the bats on the foot. I think that'll be really nice for me too because I have trouble with color work socks not being stretchy enough um, and just like not being super comfortable to like get on and off on the ankle. But on the foot, it's fine because you don't have to pull it over your heel. So I think having... A pair that's tall but these I can wear with like boots or whatever um and then also having a short like super Halloweeny batty pair will be really fun um so that is one of my cast-ons and I am I'm gonna try to keep all my projects in project bags from now on I usually just kind of have them everywhere this is kind of a side thing but I um I'm going to start keeping them in bags so that I have everything I need in there. I have stitch markers and everything and then keeping a little notebook. I have one of these pretty much in each of these bags except the ones that have a printed pattern in them because I can write on the printed pattern. But then I can write in here what I'm doing on the sock. So if I do this sock and then wait a really long time to cast on the second sock, I have my stitch counts and everything and if I do anything weird I will write it down and it's like with the yarn in the project bag because sometimes reading my knitting to figure out the stitch counts and stuff is really confusing <laughs> um, especially if I'm doing socks for someone else and I'm like oh I'll do like a few more stitches or I'll make the foot a little bit longer and then it's hard for me to tell what I did um, for the second sock so this bag um, I made. <laughs> um, I used to do a lot more sewing than I do now, but I had a lot of fun for a long time making these boxy pouches. I have some more pouches bags that I made too. But yeah, just for fun for me, I did a quilted um, scrappy project bag. It's perfect for socks, especially for having the two 50 gram balls in there. They sit in there so nice. And then my like, sock just kind of sits on top of that. Um, the next sock that I started is in this, another project bag that I made. This is from Can Do Patterns on Etsy. If you're a sewer and knitter and want to make your own project bag, look how nice this is. Look at that. This is probably the most legit thing I've ever sewn. Anyway, the the sock is here. This is coming out so cool. Um, this pattern is the Seasons Sock by Summerly Designs. It's a new pattern that she just released like maybe a few weeks ago. It is sort of like a waffle type of texture. So it's really textured and squishy. The texture is easy um like I read the directions once did like two repeats to get it established it's a four row repeat and now like I can read the knitting I don't have to stop like I don't have to finish the repeat to be able to pick it back up again um it's really simple um and it's like very it's really cool um so yeah it's it's really cool. I'm really, really liking this pattern. I'll probably make more of these, especially for like winter, winter, um, whenever I want like warm, tall socks to wear 
with um, like my boots. Um, I got this yarn from my local yarn store. This is Barocco Vintage Sock and I am actually really liking it. So I figured I should try this one out because this is a $10 100 gram ball of sock yarn which is great and I really liked the color. They had some nice heathered colors. I think you can tell that this has some heathering and like depth to it and I was like that'll be really nice. I literally thought of this pattern because I've been wanting to make it and thought that they would be a perfect combination. Um, so I will keep you guys updated probably like whenever I actually wear and wash this yarn to see kind of how it holds up. It's different because it's part acrylic. Um, I'll have to, I'll look up the makeup and put it up here for you guys so you can see, but it has like acrylic wool and nylon or something like that. And so I think it's going to be super, super warm, but I think that'll be um, nice for winter. And I think these will hold up really well to machine washing and potentially drying. We'll see about that part though. These are a little bit more snug than most of my socks. So maybe, maybe I won't put that in the dryer. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so this is the season sock, sock number two. And the third sock is just a simple one that I cast it on because I wanted both of those. It's a little bit harder for me to do just, um, on the go and everything. The red one is not so bad because that stitch pattern is really simple and memorizable, but I do have to like look down at it to kind of see where I am and make sure that I'm, you know, it's like got some slip stitches and some pearls and stuff. So I'm like kind of making sure that I'm doing it right. Um, so I wanted to have something that was just plain vanilla knitting. I did start classes again this week. I started yesterday. So I wanted to have a totally vanilla sock to just take with me to campus and everything. So this is my vanilla sock and I am happy with it. Just getting, I started this uh, last night. Um, this is also knit picks, lots of knit picks and cheap yarn today. Um, don't look at my yarn cozy. They're like kind of clashing, but it's a like dark green with brown, black and green and cream colored tweed. Um, I'm not sure what the color is. Um, but it's, but it, it is a uh, Knit Picks Stroll Tweed is the yarn and it's really soft and it's going really well. My partner actually found this for me in Denver. They were traveling for work and there was this teeny tiny yarn shop by their hotel and they sold a bunch of Knit Picks yarn there. And, and so I don't know and then so they thought that this would be a really fun like fall like Thanksgiving type of colorway and I love that like idea like I, I don't know if I would have I think I, I think I would have thought the same thing like just looking at it but they had said that and I was like that is perfect um and I've never used a Tweety yarn before I'm always like not sure how it's gonna look and stuff like there's something weird about it to me but I feel like the color of this just works really well with the tweed it's cute right I think it's gonna be a really nice uh pair of socks and I mean vanilla socks are just so easy to wear especially with the commercial yarn wash it dry it it's just they're so great to have so these I'll be working on on the go and in my classes and stuff and I am so happy about that <laughs> and again we got a little pouch that I made and um, a little book in here so I have my uh, my notes for my stitch counts and everything in there okay <laughs> I had to answer my phone because my friends two of my friends are gonna come over in a few minutes which I'm really excited about It'll probably take them a little while to get here. So I am going to finish up my thoughts about my projects. Um, okay, so this last like smaller one, I talked about this one last time and I have not made a ton of progress on it, but I wanted to bring it out and show you guys. So this is a marled hat. It's going to be the exact same as that blue marled hat that I 
showed as a finished object last time and I have only I put the stitch marker in last episode so I could see how much I did I've only done that much this is a little bit um it's a little bit harder on my hands than my other projects I think the yarn is just like a little thick on like the small needles to where it's like a little bit tighter and then doing the rib something about it like kind of irritates my hand a little bit so I can't work on it for very long um, but I, I still want to finish it and I'm just going to keep making slow progress on this but details about that are in my last episode if you're interested see easy getting through them let me talk about my little bonus and then we'll do the gift projects last so look at this hold on I was at my local yarn store recently and they have all of this cute Christmas stuff out and I have always wanted to do a needlepoint ornament so that is what I bought a little needlepoint ornament and I got started on it right after I got it I've been taking a little bit of a break from it um, just because I've been doing socks and stuff because I can kind of do this while we watch TV um, it's you know it's pretty easy it's really fun but I, I filled out so most of like the sky over here I that's all done and then the um, like this top part I've started to to work through and then I have like strings attached to the back to keep going with those colors it's funny like I don't know like the right way to do this and sometimes I feel like I'm doing it wrong but yeah it's just fun and a little Christmas cheer I have a few other Christmas cheer type of things going on in my brain <laughs> things I'm working on for my business I'm working on some um, hand painted ornaments for Christmas and it's just kind of I know it's August but like we're getting there you know it's like almost time <laughs> Um, so that has been really fun to start working on and like this is something that I needed to have everything I need in the little bag. I need to have my little scissors in there because you can't break the cotton yarn with your hands really. And um, I have all my other stitches, my little directions, um, and my little needle and everything in the little pouch that I made. So I am excited about that. And now it is time to say if your name is Andy and you're my sister or you are my parents, get out of here because I'm knitting a present for you and I want to show it to YouTube, but I don't want to show it to you because it's a surprise. Okay, I think they're gone. So let's talk about this gift for my sister Andy. No, let's talk about the one for my parents first because I haven't made very much progress. I just wanted to say that it's in progress because I talked about last time I needed to order the rest of the yarn and I did order the rest of the yarn. So the big blanket that I was holding up last time, it looks very similar now. I did a little bit more and finished that second ball of yarn and I've ordered 14 more balls so I am making my parents for Christmas a 16 ball bulky weight blanket and I'm excited about it okay that's about it I don't know why I feel like I need to tell y'all about every single thing that I'm working on but I'm just gonna throw that in there because you know what it is I think I feel like I have all of these whips and they're all in my mind and I think part of why I felt like, oh, I need to do an episode, I need to catch everyone up, is because there's so much. And just like leaving some out and waiting for next time, just like, that's that seems more chaotic than mentioning everything, even though there's not that much to say. I don't know. If you are like really into knitting podcasts, you watch a lot of these, or if you are a knitting podcaster, maybe like write me a comment and leave your like tips on like what do you do with yourself whenever you have a bunch of whips and you don't want to mention everything but you don't want to skip stuff like what's what's best practice on that I'm not really sure anyway 
the last work in progress. This is definitely the most exciting. This is a gift for my sister. And instead of in a pouch that I made, it was in this giant box thing because it's large and there's a lot of yarn. Um, so let me just show y'all. This is a vest <laughs> that I'm making for Andy. And I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> um, the, the colors I think are coming out really cute. I'm kind of like now starting to like wonder if it's too much, like color wise. But I do think that she's really gonna like it. Um, and I'm getting close to being finished, honestly. Um, the length is actually pretty good. Um, but what I need to do, because the armholes are so big, and I think that doing the ribbing on the armholes, like how I did on the neck, will tighten them up a little bit. Um, I put the bottom of this on tried on tubing so that I can do the armholes next to see it if that shortens the top um, because this feels like it's a good length. And in the, the striping pattern, this would be a good time to start the ribbing because see how I got to the dark green and then the light green and then gray is next. I'm gonna do gray ribbing on the sides and on the bottom. So I think what I'm kind of leaning towards is just seeing how long to make the ribbing based on where this sits on me after I do the armholes. Um, because my sister and I are pretty like similar sizes. We're definitely the like same exact height. Um, so I can get an idea of where this is going to fall on her. And she definitely, I don't think would mind like a cropped fit, but it's like, it is like for winter and I don't want it to be like super cropped. And I'm kind of worried that doing the armholes will like pick all of this up like a lot. Um, but right now the, the end, these live stitches at the end hit me at like my like hip bone, like, so that's pretty good because then I'd add two, three inches of ribbing and then it's like a full length top. Um, but then I think that'll shorten it up some. And then I think that'll be a good length, but I'm, I'm going to do the armholes um, and then try it on some more and kind of make sure and confirm my idea. See if I should do like more like two inches or more like three inches of ribbing for the bottom in the gray. Um, the yarn is Swish Worsted from Knit Picks. Lots of Knit Picks yarn and I have more coming in. Um, that, that blanket also I'm doing with Knit Picks, uh, Bravo Bulky, which is Knit Picks everywhere. Um, but I ordered one 50 gram ball of each color, but two of the gray. Um, and I also ordered two of the navy because I was considering doing like navy instead of dark green and doing navy as the um, armholes. Um, but I went with the color scheme with the dark green. But now I'm kind of looking at like the leftovers that I have of these yarns. Like whenever I finished that, that green stripe, this is what I had left. So if you are making this project, you might want to get two balls of the different colors. Um, I think this is the third, the third size. And I used six colors where I think the pattern says to use seven. So maybe it would come out a little bit different, but I was getting pretty nervous because I even like, I was doing 10 rounds and I didn't actually have enough to do 10 rounds on the bottom stripe. I only did nine and a half and I'm gonna change my beginning around to be on the other side for the ribbing because this is what is left. It's like less than two yards. <laughs> I don't know why I put it back in here. Um, but yeah, so just be mindful of that if you are making this pattern. Um, and you want to use like 50 gram balls, it might get a little tight. Like I was worried, like if I needed to do another pink stripe, like I, maybe this is enough for another stripe, but I don't know. That's really not much. Um, this definitely seemed like more than this one did whenever I started the stripe. So this probably isn't enough for a stripe. I think I should, whenever I fully finish, um, I'll weigh my leftovers, um, I can get a guesstimate from my swatch too of how much I used for that um, to see how much 
of each of the yarns I used. Um, in case you're looking for that information or wanting to make this vest. I am loving the project. Um, it's so like soft and stuff too. Like I think that I need to make one of these for myself um, in maybe a solid color or like a lower contrast stripe. Like I think I would be really into this in like dark gray and this beige color with the stripes. Um, I think that would be super nice, um, right? I think I'd wear it a lot once it like gets cold. Um, and this is, I mean, it fits me pretty well. I would maybe do the second size instead of the third size for myself because it has some extra room on me. Um, but this size would, would work too. I'll have to see how it looks with the, whenever I finish the armholes and maybe put it on with like layers like I would if it were actually cold to see how it fits with layers underneath and over it and that kind of thing. But this is an awesome project. I didn't say the pattern. This is um, called the Cruiseberg Vest by Rebecca Mouser. And I was very much inspired by the sample photo. I'll put a uh, the sample photo up. The like playful colors that are going on in the sample. I thought Andy would love that and I wanted to kind of model this after that. So I changed the colors quite a bit, but I wanted to go with a similar idea of having some brighter uh, mixed with some neutrals. So that's the Cruiseberg vest and it's almost done. And I have almost a month until Andy's birthday. So I have plenty of time to get that finished. And with the leftovers from that, because I'm going to have a lot of leftover yarn in kind of random colors, um, and it's a worsted weight, 100% superwash. Um, I'm going to make my dog a sweater. Just had to say it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make my dog a super cute sweater. And I'm excited about it. I did find a pattern. I'll just share that next time if I have it started for next podcast. Um, there, there are some really cute patterns to choose from. But I think I found a really good one that's like ribbed and has like a long neck. I think it's going to be so cute on my dog, Otis. So it's awesome. Um, but yeah, a little bit of an update, um, for art and life and everything. I started class, like I said, um, I think this semester is going to be really good. It's going to be a little bit more chill than last semester. I have three classes instead of four. One of them is senior projects, so there's a lot of independent, um, work that I will be doing for that. But I, I work well like that. I've been, you know, making art and working independently all summer, so I feel really good about that. And my two other, like, regular studio classes are with a teacher that I really like and subjects that I'm really interested in. I'm taking contemporary craft and wearable art. Those are my two studios. Like, that is such a dream to me, and I'm so happy that I, like, just get to to work on this stuff like for a grade as part of my degree. It's so cool. So I'm I'm really looking forward to those. In my wearable art class, we're gonna do a little bit of jewelry making type of like techniques. My teacher is the same for both of these classes. She is a metalsmith. Um, she like makes jewelry and small sculpture and like sculptural adornments for the body. And her work is incredible and I love her as a teacher so I'm really really looking forward to that both like learning new things about jewelry making and wearable art as a concept and being able to like apply my fiber love and like fiber stuff into that and think about how they relate that kind of thing that's really exciting for me so yeah, I want to keep up my podcast, try to do it once a week. And if you uh, subscribe, stay, stay and hang out with me. I'll be doing more updates on what is going on with my school, my senior project, my business. I'm selling uh, paintings mostly um, and other art prints and stuff. So if you're interested in just art in general, fiber art, art school, um, stay. <laughs> stay and hang out and I would love to have you here so thank you guys so 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 much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one